What's going on, smart people? If you don't know by now, which is pretty impossible, I mean, I've mentioned it 69 times at this point, this semester I'm registered for a course in quantum field theory. I have almost peaked as a human being. But this is a two-part course, and this is the second part of the two-part course, where both of these courses tackle QFT in completely different ways, and theoretically, you don't need to go through the first course to be able to understand the second course. The second course goes through the path integral approach to QFT, and the first course focuses on what's called second quantization or canonical quantization. Now, I'm taking the second course for credit, so I'm learning about path integrals, and it's going to affect my GPA, for better or for worse, uh, but I still want to become as knowledgeable as I can about second quantization. So today, I met with the professor who taught QFT1. He just so happens to also be my quantum mechanics professor, and while we were meeting, I let him know that I've been self-educating with the second quantization stuff, but there's only so much I can convince myself I understand without having, you know, a whole lot of problems with solutions or something to work through or you know I might come up with problems that aren't actually as instructive as I would have thought they would be so he gave me the homework assignments for last semester's QFT so today I'm gonna to be going over the first homework set I'm not gonna be going over them verbatim after this homework because you know I want them to be able to reuse questions and things like that and I don't want to spoil the problems this is just a really basic homework so it's okay for this one but let's go ahead and get into it homework problem sheet one uh, this is basically one big problem set on special relativity, tensors, and four vectors, and things like that. So the first problem, by the way, I like how he lets you know how hard it is. Maybe that's this was really easy for him, and it has no indicator of how hard it will be for you. I'm not too sure. I haven't tried these yet. But the first one, let x mu be this four vector in Minkowski space, and let a mu be another four vector, uh, defining the dot product between them, which of the following quantities is a Lorentz scalar, i.e. invariant under Lorentz transformation? So it gives a few a few uh, equations here, and I guess we've got to find out which ones are Lorentz invariant. Shouldn't be hard at all. I mean, the product of four vectors, the dot product of four vectors is Lorentz invariant. So if you have like dot products of two things that are Lorentz invariant, that's just a number. It doesn't depend on your reference frame. So that's how you should probably approach this problem. Calculate the four gradient of the Lorentz scalars. That's just a generalization of the gradient that you know and love from multivariable calculus, except for instead of three vectors, x, y, and z, you have your x, y, and z in time component as well. Well, I guess time x, y, z. Write the following expression such that there is no metric tensor anymore. Metric tensor is really useful for raising and lowering indices on vectors and tensors, so I'm sure that that's just an exercise of that. That's pretty easy. How do these quantities transform under Lorentz transformation if they are four vectors? Well, they should transform, well, how do these quantities? So yeah, I'll have to take a look at that one. Lorentz transformation from a frame S to a frame S prime for a general boost of, of an arbitrary direction is given by, so this is the Lorentz transformation, uh, write the transformation of the form. So we've got just like a linear transformation. Check explicitly that the inner product of the two arbitrary four vectors is invariant under this transformation. That's what I said. If you have four vectors and you take the dot product, that quantity, that scalar quantity should not change under transformations, uh, at least Lorentz transformations. Um, show that the integration measure d4x is invariant under the transformation for the special case of beta, okay? Um, cool, so that, that actually all seems really easy. Problem three, three points easy. We will see about that. A general Lorentz transformation lambda is subject to the equation lambda uh, transpose times g times lambda is equal to g. Check that the set of Lorentz transformations forms a group. Cool, so it's getting into the Lorentz group. This is similar to uh, the group of transformations that satisfies the transformation transpose times the, the original matrix equals the identity being O3, you know what I'm saying? Or if you impose conditions on the uh, on the determinant becoming SO3. So it's getting into, uh, it seems like a really basic group theory. Let T mu nu be a tensor of rank two, oh, which is this one? Sorry, skipped one. For each Lorentz transformation, we have the determinant equaling plus or minus one. Show that we have an addition, this relationship here. Next, let T mu nu be a tensor of rank two and A, I like how much this is for uh, emphasizing comfortability with tensors, index manipulation and how tensors transform. I like this. This is going to be fun. Uh, so this is a tensor of rank 2. A mu is a 4 vector. Verify that the contraction of T and A transforms like a 4 vector. And this is a Lorentz scalar. Okay. Again, should be really easy. 
So that one, that one was easy. This one is medium. So we got one medium level problem, one level 12 uh, uh, special relativity problem. A lot of people, I, don't, I think when they're first introduced to special relativity aren't introduced to like four vector notation. I think in undergrad and like modern physics courses, you might just, you know, have your E squared equals P squared plus M squared, um, setting C equal to one, of course. So I, 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 let me know in the comment section, if you were introduced to special relativity, did your professor push for four vector and tensor notation? Because it's, a lot of cases, it's kind of unnecessary. So I can understand people saying, forget about it, but I, I like it. Uh, the four force, the four force uh, that acts on a particle of mass m may be defined as this, where v mu is the four velocity of the particle, p mu is its four momentum, and t is the proper time. Show that v dot f is zero. Use the explicit form. Okay, so we've got a little a little gamma factor here that depends on time, uh, in order to show that f mu is equal to gamma t times this. So this is just a bunch of show that this is the answer. The relativistic energy show that d e d t equals f dot v. Show that f mu can be written as this. Okay. Yeah, who knows how challenging this is going to be. I haven't tried any of these yet. They don't look particularly hard. Uh, maybe if it's your first encounter with tensors, it could be pretty challenging. Um, but it seems pretty basic. I'm trying to see if any of them really stand out as you know, difficult. A lot of these, like the first one, you can just make arguments to see what the answer should be. You know, just on, on knowing that the dot product of four vectors should always give a scalar. So if you're taking ratios of scalars, it's also going to be a scalar. Uh, this one doesn't look too bad. I'm always used to um, defining transformation uh, coefficients for, for any type of linear transformation in terms of partial derivatives. I rarely ever use it as the actual matrix notation. So just going back to that, I don't think it's going to be hard, but it, you know, I'll, I'll probably make sure to connect the dots between the two. Um, the integration measures and variance. Some of this might just be really tedious. I don't know. So this looks pretty fun. Let me know in the comment section how you think this looks. Do you think like um, if you took a course in modern physics, do you think it would have prepared you for for any of these problems? I suspect in so my modern physics course, I would say no. Our modern physics, when we went over special relativity, was super super basic. Maybe in E and M two, you know, by by that time, I would have felt more comfortable solving these kinds of problems, and especially after going through this book, Tensor Calculus for Physics. Um, you know, that just turned me into a huge tensor boy, level 12 tensor boy to be specific. So this looks pretty cool to me. Let me know in the comment section, uh, all those things that I asked you to let me know in the comment section, because I forgot all of them. And I will see you guys there.